All right, we're going to continue on with uh, factoring here in section 5.2 of Al Grosha's book, Developmental Math 2. We're going to start factoring some trinomials in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. But before we factor trinomials, we're going to first review some multiplication because factoring is just undoing multiplication. So we need to remember what we do when we multiply. When we multiply two binomials, we sometimes use this acronym FOIL. If this is what you learned, that's fine. I think in my videos I called it double distribute. So when we multiply x plus 3 times x plus 4, we will distribute this x to this binomial back here. And that would give us x squared plus 4x. And then we would distribute the 3 to this binomial back here, and that would give us 3x plus 12, and then we will combine like terms, generally here in the middle. So we have 7x. So we'll end up with x squared plus 7x plus 12. Well, now that we're doing factoring, we're actually going to start with this finished trinomial, and we're going to figure out what two binomials we can multiply to give us this trinomial. So if we analyze this, we can kind of see where all the numbers are coming from. So when we're looking at a trinomial, and this is what I call standard trinomial, it has a lead coefficient of 1. It's the invisible 1 there in front of the x squared term. We first think about, well, how did this x squared get here? What did we multiply to make this x squared? Well, we multiplied x times x. So when we're starting our factoring, we tear apart the x squared and we put x times x there. Where did the other numbers come from? Where did this 12 come from? This 12 came from multiplying 3 times 4. Well, that's great. So we need the 3 and the 4. But why wasn't it 2 times 6 or 12 times 1? Well, that has all to do with where did this 7 come from? The 7 also came from the 4 and the 3, but this time they were added. So when you're factoring a trinomial, you're looking for two numbers that will multiply to make this back number the constant two numbers that multiply to make 12, but the same two numbers add to make 7. That's why it's not 6 and 2. 6 and 2 won't give you 7 in the middle. Two numbers that multiply to make 12 and add to make 7 are 4 and 3. And that's where this 4 and this 3 come from. Now you can see I wrote them in the opposite order from up here. It's okay. x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 4, x plus 4. It doesn't matter what order you write these binomials in. As long as you have the right signs, you have the right binomial. So this is what we're going to practice in this section, tearing apart trinomials to find out what binomials will make them. So let's practice multiplication again. Distribute this x term first. So x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And you can see what happened with the 2 and the 5. Well, they got multiplied to make the 10, but now they're going to add to make a middle term here. And because they're different signs, they actually subtract. So x squared plus 3x minus 10. These next two pages really, um, and you can review them at your leisure, they just go through exactly what I just said on the first page, why the numbers come out the way they do. It's just an explanation of what happens when you unfoil your trinomials. This page is all about signs. Um, I don't always like to think about the signs like this. When I go through the video in the next page or two, I'm going to tell you an easy way to figure out what the signs are. Um, this page is just kind of a reference for you. So you can look at that as you, as you need to. On this page, we're actually going to practice the factoring. So we have x squared plus 7x minus 10. We need to un unfoil it. So we're going to find which two binomials will give us this. So don't forget, how do we get x squared? Well, we get x squared by multiplying x times x. The easy way to do your signs is always to bring this first one down into your first binomial and then multiply these two signs together. 
So if you multiply positive times positive, you will always get positive, and that's what comes into your second binomial. Now, since you have the same signs, you will always be adding in the middle. Same signs, make adding. If they're different signs, they will subtract in the middle. So we have same signs here. We have a plus and a plus. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 10, but add to make 7. What numbers multiply to make 10? Well, 1 times 10, but those don't add to make 7. 2 times 5, those add to make 7. And I write the biggest one first. So x plus 5 times x plus 2. And how do you check? You check by doing multiplication or distributive property. You guys, pause the video right now. Take a minute to check. Did you get x squared plus 7x plus 10? Yes. If you did, then you have the right factors. x squared minus 9x plus 18. Again, I'm going to put my binomial parentheses in. x squared is x times x. I'm going to bring this sign down. And then I'm going to multiply these two signs. A negative times a positive equals a negative. So that sign is going to go there. And they're still the same signs, which means we're adding in the middle. Factors of 18 that add to make 9. Now, there are a lot of factors of 18, quite a few. Could be 1 times 18, could be 2 times 9, could be 3 times 6. But only one of those sets will add to give you 9. So that would be 3 times 6 or 6 times 3 because I always write the biggest one first. If you're doing this, bringing down this side, this sign, you always need to write the biggest one first. Pause right now and check your work by doing distributive property. All right, let's move on. We're going to factor x squared minus 2x minus 24. I'm going to put my binomials in. x squared is x times x. I'm going to bring this sign down. And then I'm going to multiply the signs. Negative times negative makes positive. So this time I have a positive here. And this time I have different signs. Different signs mean that your terms will subtract to make the middle. Still two numbers that multiply make 24, but now two numbers subtract to make 2. Um, and again, there are a lot of factors of 24, so we'll write them over here. 1 times 24, but that doesn't subtract to make 2. 2 times 12 also does not subtract to make 2. 3 times 8 does not subtract to make 2. 4 times 6, okay, now those will subtract to make 2. Make sure you write the biggest one first because you're going to need a negative 6 and a positive 4 to give you the negative 2 in the middle. Negative 6 plus 4 makes negative 2. Negative 6 times positive 4 makes negative 24. So make sure you always check. All right, let's do this one. x squared plus 29x minus 30. How do we get x squared? x times x. Bring the first sign down. Multiply the two signs. Positive times negative makes negative. So again, we have different signs. So we'll be looking for two numbers that multiply to make 30, but subtract to make 29 because they'll be different signs. So if you need to, make a list over here. What numbers multiply to make 30? 1 times 30. Well, there we go. If we subtract 1 and 30, we'll get 29, won't we? Write the biggest one first. Positive 30 plus negative 1 makes positive 29. Positive 30 times negative 1 makes negative 30. Okay, this one looks a little strange because we have this negative sign out here. And there is kind of a rule that says that we can't really start factoring with a negative sign on the lead coefficient. So we need to get this negative sign off of here. And the way to do that is to take out a negative 1 as a GCF. We did that in the last section we did GCF. Um, if we factor out a negative 1, we're just dividing everything by negative 1 to get that negative off the lead coefficient. So that would be positive x minus 14x plus 45. It just changes the signs. 
so that now we can factor. This negative one doesn't go away. It's still there. It's in your uh, final answer. It's just off so that we can factor the trinomial. All right, x squared is x times x. The first sign comes down. Multiply the two signs. Negative times positive makes negative. We have same signs. So two numbers that multiply to make 45 but add to make 14. And that would be 9 times 5. All right, this trinomial is difficult because of the 2 here in the front. Um, but if you look, all these terms are divisible by 2, which means the 2 is a GCF here. So again, just like we did the GCF on the last example, we're going to factor out a 2 to make this easier for us to factor. When you factor out a 2, you're just dividing everything by 2. And now you're left with a trinomial that has a lead coefficient of 1 that we know how to factor. The GCF doesn't go away. That 2 is still there in your final answer. It's just out on the outside. So x squared is x times x. The first sign, bring it down, and then multiply the signs. Negative times positive makes negative. So we have the same signs. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 8, add to make 6. And that would be 4 and 2.